everyone, welcome to Connected. Today we gather to celebrate the life of a courageous, brave young man that has survived a nearly fatal car accident. It is impressive what a driven mind, a loving family, and the right support can do for a person. His name is Carl Van Winkle. Nowadays, he dedicates his life to visit schools and share his story to raise awareness. And he comes with an important message. Today I have the pleasure to interview Carl Van Winkel. He's talking to us all the way from Kansas in the US. And I invited Carl because he has a very peculiar and very touching story about his life. He's a young man that it's um, an inspiration because he has gone through a lot and he's here today to share his story with us. Carl, welcome to Connected. I am so happy to reconnect with you after all of these years and to see how well you're doing. Let's go ahead with the first question. Tell us a little bit about uh, your life before the accident. How was Carl Van Winkle back then? Hi everyone, my name is Carl Van Winkle and um, I'm 26 years old now, but uh, who was I before the car accident? I mean, everyone, everyone knew who I was. I mean, I, 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 I was just a very, very personable guy. I mean, and uh, I, I, I started being like a follower. I mean, I, I started doing stuff that everyone that everyone else was doing. Whether, whether that was smoking pot, drinking alcohol, you know, I was doing it. Just, just to like fit in, I guess. And uh, I, mean, I, I, I was I, I was a normal teenager. That is what that is what I was. I mean, and uh, my mom my, no my mom grounded me from pot. Um, before the accident, and uh, she had actually ungrounded me the day before the the accident, and uh, she told me I could go I could go over to my buddy's house, but couldn't leave his house. So, so, so I took that and made plans for the girl that night. I mean. <laughs> because my mom thought I was going to be at my buddy's house and uh, so so I was at my buddy's house and uh, we were just chilling for eh, a few hours and then 7 o'clock came around that night and uh, the girl picked me up she was driving uh, she was driving me and her to a, uh, to a party and uh, I and I I don't know what I, I don't know what was going on other than that. But but uh so we we're on the way to a party and we were approaching the intersection and uh and she completely ignores a left turn yield. And she and <clears throat> She apparently didn't see an obviously speeding Chevy Tahoe going 56 and a 45 coming right at us. And that, that, that very Chevy Tahoe, he boned my side of the vehicle. Now, the vehicle I was in didn't have airbags. So that made the impact that much worse. And, and, and the thing is, the reason why not, nothing physically happened to her, I had my seatbelt on. Did, did anyone else in the accident? No. <laughs> no one else had a seatbelt on. So I, so I'm a real lifesaver. <laughs> no, no, but, but, um, the, the, the thing is, I mean, it was just too, it was just an accident. I mean, 
and uh, I could have I, I could have avoided everything if I would have followed if I wouldn't have disobeyed my mom. And then the accident happened. When did you recover? When did you gain again, like? Conscience. When did you wake up? Well, um, all right, all right. I, I thankfully was like five minutes away from one of the best trauma hospitals in the United States, and uh, and they had me, they had me in a medically induced coma there in the hospital for nearly a month, but. After, and, and, and after they woke me up from from my medically induced coma, I remained in a coma up at the rehab hospital um, for four and a half months. So, so my coma lasted four and a half months, and uh, and I I spent six months up in uh, Nebraska, the state, of, the, the, the state of Nebraska. At, uh, at rehab hospitals. <laughs> before we enter into the rehab rehabilitation process, before we get there, please kind of tell us what was your diagnosis? Uh, like, what, after they induced you to the coma and everything, what was the what was the result? What what was your condition? Uh, well, I'm pretty sure for like two weeks they thought I was dead. I mean, and trust me, <laughs> I have seen, I don't even know how many photos. I mean, I, I had a hole in my face from my mouth all the way up to my eye. That, that was how <laughs> physical my, my, my the, the, the uh, damage was. And uh, my, now my nose was shattered. Uh, my eye fell out of the socket. These uh, five teeth are not real, they're implants. And uh, I had the most difficult mouth my, or my, uh, my oral surgeon's ever seen. And uh, the, <laughs> now the truth is, I had the most difficult mouth my oral surgeon's ever seen. I mean, I, I, I didn't have my teeth for two and a half years. That is by far the longest he's ever had a patient to wait. So, but, but I mean, if if you had no idea what what happened to me, you you think I just had a bright white smile, <laughs> or something like that. I see. So, well, the damage on it was like very, very, very big. So under those four months, you were in a coma, yeah. and were you also receiving and like getting surgeries? and other types of procedures done? Yeah, yeah, um, <clears throat> I, I, I don't know if you can see a scar on my head, but, uh, but, uh, but, now, I do have a scar on my head from the intracranial pressure tube that, that they put in my, in my skull because my brain, because of the brain injury, um, my, my brain was, uh, well, no, no. There was fluid building up in my in my skull from the brain injury, and if it weren't for the for the intracranial pressure tube, um, my brain would have suffocated and I would have died. So even when you woke up from the from the coma, you didn't have like you didn't have like a bright diagnosis like oh you're going to be fine or you're going to walk again and you're going to recover your life like you still your diagnosis was like in the my generally negative is this correct well y yes and and the in the rehab hospital thought i was in a lot better like shape than i was okay I was, I was not moving for nearly like eight months. I mean, it was right. all crazy. And also, I had metal holding my face together for ten months. I had metal sticking out of my oh well, no, not sticking out of my face, but it was it was holding my mouth together. 
So once you uh, went through all of the surgeries and all of the reconstruction and the face and everything else, then you have to start to do recovery movement, correct? Like yeah. on your whole body. And that is when you left the hospital to get um, like some recover, um, to recover, to get rehabilitated, correct? So tell us about your experience when you were already able to think and to realize what was happening to your body and you probably were able to do some type of exercises. How was that experience for you? The uh, thing is, that, that was a long time. I mean, that was, that was nearly like a year until I was able to like accept the fact that all this shit happened to me. I mean, I was right. I I was refusing to accept the fact that I was never going to be the same, you know. Right. And I, I was the same. <laughs> I mean, in a way, but <laughs> but I'm not. I mean, I I have been right. through hell. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> but so it took you one year to kind of like say, okay, I I have to accept and I have to move on. And then you started to do your rehab, well, well, your well, physical rehabilitation. Well, the the the, the thing the thing was no, actually, it took several years to finally accept the fact that I, that I have a brain injury. There's no change in that. I mean, there's no recovery from a brain injury. I'm injured, but eventually your recovery stops. I mean. And uh, right. and the thing is, um, now, <laughs> if you listeners or viewers are trying to understand what I'm saying, <laughs> I do have the most difficult speech impediment to overcome, um, and I have it to like right. the level possible. I mean, it took me two and a half years to learn to talk again. You kind of have to relearn. Yes. Like relearn speaking, walking, movements. Yeah. Uh, every everything that you learn as a baby, I had to learn over again. But as my mom tells me, I mean, it, it was harder to teach Carl to do that stuff again than, than, than a whole baby. I mean, because baby, baby does that naturally, you know. Right, yeah. right. And then Carl, what I really think that it is um, uh, amazing in a way because um, as you said, emotionally, this all of this situation hits you in a very heavy, deep way. But after all, everything you went through, surgeries, recover and everything else, you decided to kind of like give back and go out there and start working and giving speeches, going to schools and talking to people. I'm not going to uh, talk in the religious perspective. I'm going to talk in, in the in the way that I feel. All right. I mean, I I feel God made this happen to me to help others, to help others realize that it can always be worse. You could always be worse off, and and, and I mean, don't look, at, don't look at your problems so negatively, and be, be positive. I mean, that <laughs> that's what you have to do. I mean, if if well, like you fail a test, <laughs> don't worry, <laughs> there's more coming. <laughs> you know, I mean. You, or like your boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with you? <laughs> Don't worry, I've been in several relationships. <laughs> uh, there's another one around the corner. <laughs> man. Uh, uh, right. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and, and uh, but but also also, what I really want the kids to realize: wear your damn seatbelt. Because if my seatbelt wasn't on. I probably would have killed the driver that wasn't that that wasn't buckled, and also <laughs> that wasn't physically impacted at all. Right. And and um, I was the only one buckled in that accident. I was the only one buckled, and I got the most damage done to me. And 
and, and the thing is, also don't give up and <laughs> make good decisions because <laughs> one bad decision can destroy your life, <laughs> can, can, can end your life even, can change your life <laughs> drastically. And don't drive distracted because that is the reason why the accident happened. Distracted driving. Now was it a cell phone? No. <laughs> God only knows what the hell it was. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. And tell us about, well, of course I'm sure, and you wouldn't be able to be here right now if it wasn't for your family because of course this happened to you but also affected them and it happened to them. So tell me a little bit about how was their experience as a family? Oh my gosh. I, I, I my mama is my best friend. My best friend. <laughs> She's a great person. And, and me, me, me and my dad are also also very close. I mean, I, now, my dad lives in St. Louis, and uh, I mean, <laughs> Doesn't mean that doesn't mean I don't talk to him on the phone or on Skype. I mean, and uh, right. and, and, and and same goes with my stepmom. I mean, we're, we 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 are close. Um, and um, my my sister and brother are very close. And uh, now instead of the instead of everything like breaking us apart. We have come together, very, and, and, and I'm very close with all my family. I've, of course, I've of course. And then, Carl, okay, so tell me, it's been 10 years. It's been 10 years from, like, after this accident, you overcome so much. And um, what do you see in the future? What is it that Carl, this Carl today, wants from the future or expects from it? I expect to help people. I mean, that is why I feel that this accident happened to me. Like God or whoever, they want me to help people. I mean, help people <laughs> avoid accidents, don't drive distracted. I mean, Thing is, this shit can happen to anyone. I wasn't even driving, and and, and, and I, I I don't know if you even know this, Fabiana. Um, the the apparently the number one distraction in motor in motor vehicle accidents isn't cell phones, isn't like the radio, isn't anything like that. It's other people in the car. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, it really does. I mean, and. and I also have mentioned the fact that I am half blind. I cannot see out of the right side with my eyes. You see, the optic nerve in my brain was damaged. And uh, <laughs> there's no recovery that any doctor can do to the brain or, or, or the optic nerve. Carl, tell me, let's try to make a little, like, really fast. Let's try to make it points. Right. If you have to tell these uh, young people, like, what's the most important things they need to like take care or be aware when they are in a car? What would you say would it be the three most important things? One, wear a seatbelt all the time, all the time. Okay. Two, follow, follow the rules on the road. <laughs> the rules for a reason. <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> And three, don't think that you're invincible. Is that is the one reason why I live with a brain injury now. I thought I was invincible. Meaning nothing's gonna happen to me, whatever I do. I don't care what it is that I do. Nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> but look at me now, I have a brain injury, so. Right, and those are very important things that what you just said, very, very important. And Carl, I want to tell you that even though you have a brain injury, you have come too far, you have come, you have overcome a lot. And I'm really, really happy to see you doing better, being independent, because today you live in an apartment by yourself, correct? Yeah, well, well, 
I have a dog. <laughs> then, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's say even better. You take care of an animal. Yeah. So even though, yes, you never let go, you never let yourself just, you know, you could have gone on depression and I'm sure you went oh, through that well, yeah, too. But you could, you could have just left you there, you know, you could have just said, okay, this is it. I'm not able to do things and I'm done. But no, you fought and you decided to help people and now you take care for it you take care of a dog and you have your own house and you take care of yourself yeah, so I'm there's sure. a lot a lot a lot to be thankful and i want to thank you for taking the time to share your story with us i am a fan i really think you are a miracle and i really think you can inspire a lot and lots of people in this life well i i mean not now and, and the, the the typical speaker says, well, if I, if I help one person, I did my job. No, <laughs> I want to help everyone. Right, and that's the, that's the most important thing, that you're not giving up. Carl, go ahead and share your uh, website address so people can go and visit you there. Go ahead. Okay, the name of my website is uh, <laughs> myname.com. So it's www.carl vanwinkle.com I send you a kiss all the way to Kansas right. and we talk I'll let bye you. <laughs> yeah. thank you be well thank you you too human beings are resilient never stop working on your mind your body never stop feeding your soul having a strong connection with oneself makes a difference and it can change it can enhance your future to connect with me, write me to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com or send me a private message on my Facebook fan page. Stay connected and until next time with me. Bye-bye.